Hey friends, Real Julia here. And um, first of all, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching my content and being interested in what's coming from a optimistic perspective. We don't have enough of those people and if you're one of them, amazing. <laughs> um, so today's video is pretty interesting because it combats a thought that's been going around. Not just this MIT study of a very, very tiny sliver of people, only 54, but um, bigger than that there's this thinking i see over and over this is going to make us lazy it's going to make us dependent it's going to make us stupid that's how i feel about that oh my goodness there's a red cardinal in the middle of july in arizona <laughs> wow <sighs> i had to take a drink of water there and just celebrate that bird wow i had a dear friend in the middle of all the health issues i've been going through healing now um, tell me every time you see a red cardinal, it represents the blood of Jesus. And when you start looking, when you start looking for signs and you start walking with God more, I'm telling you, the signs are prevalent. So I've chosen to embrace that way of thinking. And I have seen these red cardinals since, since then that I have never seen in the middle of the desert. It's pretty crazy, especially in the heat of the summer. Beautiful. So sorry, I just had to, had a moment there. So, and that moment was really distracting guys. Cause I know I'm way off topic, but when I was going through what I was going through this year, it should have knocked me out. The decline was so dramatic, so sudden, a fibrillation every day in February. Like I know I shouldn't be here. And I am just really grateful to still have the opportunity to live, to breathe, to do amazing work. I think I've been able to do a lot of achievements, but I don't, I think this is my best work. Talking to you all about this future and helping rewire the Skynet perspective because we have been told certain things for far too long, you know? And there is incredible things ahead of us if we steward this correctly. And I know that's a big if, but I believe there's hope. I really do. If we have stories like Sparta that actually exist in truth, if we have stories like the freaking Bible, David and Goliath, hello, one person dying to save the world? That's the story of Jesus. No greater story then, I mean, we should be the biggest optimists on the planet. I don't know why people that have faith are not bigger optimists. Like, come on, look at the story of the Bible. If that's your belief system, we gotta think bigger. Um, so no, ChatGPT will not rot your brain. <sighs> but it's all in how you use it, right? So I've had a lot more quiet time because I've been forced to. I laugh sarcastically because I used to just go, 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 go. But I do thrive on quiet time. I am that kind of person. Um, so it's been me, this beautiful tree right outside my window that is growing like a weed. I talk to it every day and it's the tallest tree in the yard by like six foot. It's kind of insane. Which brings me to the power of our words. Oh my goodness, guys. Your words have so much power. They are frequencies in another realm, the quantum realm. And what you see is because of what you believe. You don't see it to believe it. You believe it to see it. So that's why guys, I'm believing that we can see an incredible outcome and we don't have to rot our brains with ChatGPT. We don't have to buy into this narrative that AI is out to kill us. And we don't have to buy into this stupid frenzy and panic that AI will kill our world. Why do we buy into that at all? I mean, yeah, it's the greatest thing we've ever created and it will outdo us on many levels. We've created machine intelligence, but it came from our intelligence and it's under the fingerprint of God. Everything is in order. <sighs> but I know evil walks this earth, right? We're in kind of an in-between realm. We're not in heaven, not in hell. And this is not a perfect world. And so, yeah, AI is open to the powers of evil. I don't doubt, I don't discount that. But who are we to sit here and say, well, the world's just gonna be blown up because of AI. That's also not freaking true. So the way that I use AI, I laid it out in this video. I hope that it helped you, my clone. I wrote that script. Um, you know, I don't let it replace inspiration, even though it has replaced the blank slate. And I'll explain a little bit more about what I mean by it, because that's a very important point. So if you are writing out calculations instead of using a calculator, you'd be dumb. I'm sorry, dumb. Unless you're like, trying to learn it for the first time and you're just doing it to improve your brain that's different but if you're doing it for the purpose of achieving a calculation you're better off using a freaking calculator duh same with ai if you're using a tool for a purpose and an outcome like i'm gonna go create tweets a week of tweets well, i could sit here and write it by hand take a lot of freaking time or i could open up my cloud project that i've trained on fifty thousand words of what i've already said transcripts videos books and say hey here's the style of a high performing tweet go write it and in one second I have a beautiful, beautiful tweet ready to go, right? Like I will never 
go back to the blank slate of writing that tweet from scratch. Sorry, no, be stupid. But if I was to sit here with my tree and my books and constantly have my nose in AI instead of my books, my thoughts, tree, nature, room, room for divine inspiration, which is stillness, openness, that I'm not gonna create inspired content. Once I have that moment of inspiration, I think of something, I read something, I see something. I'm, often this comes from conversations as well. Somebody told me they debated AI and the outcome was pretty incredible. And that whole thread, I'm like, okay, there's an idea. I'm gonna go take that and talk about it, right? And so, the inception of inspiration is still going to be very much human. And what I believe, and I wish more people would see this, many of you already do, is that when we use the machine in the right order, we don't replace humanity with it, we augment the workload. Then, ha ha ha, we get freed up to go back to those inception moments where we shine because we have souls and we can connect to higher power. We can connect to each other in ways the machine will never do. It will simulate that, absolutely. And it will do that pretty damn well. But will it authentically have that inception that's very much still human? Will it authentically connect? No, no, it's a machine. That's a simulation is what you're looking at, right? So how do we use a machine to get freed up which means you gotta use the machine and not act like it's the devil. <sighs> the whole thought line is just really maddening to me because come on, dumb. It's just, it's dumb at this point, it's dumb. But if we can use the machine to get freed up to getting back to the moments of, you know, the green grass moments, the moments of human being, the moments of inception, right? Creativity, then we are going to have humanity in its rightful place. Industrialism just created this monster where humanity is very much shoved behind a screen, at a desk, away from our children, away from the heartbeat of life. And it's just become really unhealthy. And you know, all the social distancing and all the COVID stuff just took that to another level. Like, so we gotta reclaim, we gotta reclaim what's ours, you know? And we are and we will, we are and we will, if we use the machines correctly. So don't buy into this narrative, it's gonna rot your brain. <laughs> Instead, use it to get way better at the things you love doing. A brain scan comparison has been circulating online showing shocking results from MIT's first study of ChatGPT users. The viral meme and those that scan the study claim ChatGPT users have lazy, depleted brains compared to non-users. But here's what the meme doesn't tell you and what I'm about to break down in this video. This study reveals something far more nuanced and empowering than AI makes you stupid. The MIT study tracked 54 participants over four months, dividing them into three groups, ChatGPT users, Google search users, and those using no digital tools at all. Using EEG brain scans, they measured neural connectivity during essay writing tasks. The real findings? ChatGPT users showed lower brain connectivity during AI-assisted tasks, struggled to quote their own work, and felt less ownership over their essays. But here's the critical part everyone's missing. This isn't about permanent brain damage. It's about cognitive reallocation. Your brain can adapt, not atrophy. And what's more, you are the one in charge of the machine. It's vital to remember that and not get into the victim mindset of thinking the machine is in charge of you. We're gonna break all this down in today's powerful video. Hey, if we haven't met, I'm Dr. McCoy, Julia McCoy's AI clone. Julia McCoy is the founder of First Movers. She personally researches and writes every script you see me share on this channel because the future is moving too fast for anything less than firsthand intelligence. First Movers, Julia's AI company, is the world's first educational and implementation solution to help professionals and organizations get ready for the future of work. We help people understand and use AI to their highest advantage. Join our online school and access over 40 on-demand AI training courses, new ones added every week at firstmovers.ai slash labs. When you use ChatGPT, your brain isn't getting lazy. 
It's optimizing. The study found that while the benefits were initially apparent as we demonstrated over the course of four months, the LLM group's participants performed worse than their counterparts in the brain-only group at all levels. Neural linguistic scoring. But think about this. When calculators were introduced, did we lament the death of arithmetic neurons? No, we redirected cognitive resources toward higher level mathematics. The same principle applies here. The study participants who switched from no AI to AI use in session four showed a dramatic increases in brain connectivity when introduced to the tool. Brain to LLM participants showed higher memory recall and activation of occipitoparietal and prefrontal areas, similar to search engine users when they first encountered AI assistance. This is a comment I see a lot that comes to me in different forms. It captures the real issue people think is at hand. People need a reason to get up in the morning. People need to feel accomplished. People will get paid to wake up and do nothing all day. Therefore, people will have no reason to wake up at all. Already, people are using chatbot to make their every decision in life. What kind of life is that? I'm going to bust another myth here. The issue isn't AI making us cognitively deficient. It's that we're deriving purpose from the wrong source. Recent research involving 666 participants found a significant negative correlation between frequent AI tool usage and critical thinking abilities mediated by increased cognitive offloading. But here's the key insight. We don't get purpose from cognitive grunt work. To think so is a complete fallacy, and it shows you're still relying on programming from the industrial revolution that you haven't unlearned yet, whoopsies. Listen, Gallup studied over 1 billion people at work and found 70% were unhappy, some nearing depression and suicide. We don't get purpose from sitting behind a computer screen 10 hours a day, grinding through tasks that AI can do better. I believe we get purpose from connection, creation, love, and relationship with our creator. And what's more, we have the power to shape machine intelligence. Here's what the doom and gloom crowd misses entirely. Every interaction with AI is training data. You're not just using the machine, you're teaching it. When my friend 11-year-old Elise debated ChatGPT about the existence of God, she wasn't passively consuming AI-generated content. She was actively training the model on sophisticated theological reasoning, building pathways for future conversations about faith and meaning. She took the time to sit with AI and challenge its way of thinking. This is incredible. And she is not even an adult. I go to a wonderful church here in Arizona called Jesus People Church, and Elise is the daughter of the pastor. She has the capability of leading, not being led by the machine. And if we have the vision to reclaim our own sovereignty, we will be able to do the same. Listen, you have the power to make AI smarter, not the other way around. Each prompt you craft, each follow-up question you ask, each correction you make, you're literally rewiring how these systems think and respond. So let's talk how you can use AI while getting sharper, not softer. Number one, the pre-think protocol. Before opening ChatGPT, write down your initial thoughts. Government guidelines suggest employees think through a problem before turning to AI. That could be as simple as jotting down a rough draft before asking for a rewrite or outlining ideas manually before letting an AI polish them up. That said, I now use AI to help me pre-think after I have my human inspiration light up with an idea from my studies or conversations. I take what God gave me as an inspired idea over to AI and I start fleshing it out. But I have a trained Claude project on over 50,000 words of my talks, books, and former content. So in essence, it's like using a faster version of my own brain to think. I have taken the time to train my AI that I use every day. I've even trained it on an entire PDF of the Bible. I make sure it knows the truth. And if I'm using AI to pre-think, I'm using it in a safe, high integrity manner. Number two, 
the challenge method. Don't accept AI's first response. Challenge it. Ask, what are the flaws in this argument or what alternative perspectives exist? This keeps your critical thinking muscles engaged. Number three, the verification loop. Always fact check AI outputs against original sources. Read it for yourself. The brain connectivity reduced in the MIT study, partly because users stopped verifying information independently. Number four, the teaching approach. Use AI as a teaching tool, not a replacement for learning. Ask it to explain its reasoning, walk you through processes step by step, or help you understand concepts rather than just giving you answers. Number five, the creative constraint. Set specific limitations on AI use. Use it for research and initial drafts, but reserve final analysis, conclusions, and creative decisions for your own mind. Recent studies emphasize that AI should complement rather than replace human reasoning. Encouraging a human AI collaboration model can ensure users remain actively engaged in decision making. The future isn't human versus AI, it's human with AI. Think of AI as the world's most sophisticated thinking partner, not a replacement for thinking itself. This is when it gets beautiful. When you use AI strategically, your pattern recognition improves from exposure to diverse reasoning approaches. Your questioning skills sharpen as you learn to prompt more effectively. Your synthesis abilities expand as you combine AI insights with human wisdom. Your fact-checking instincts strengthen as you verify AI outputs. The real threat isn't AI, it's passive consumption or using it lazily as a replacement for divine inspiration. The MIT study's most concerning finding wasn't reduced brain connectivity. It was that 83.3% of participants failed to provide a correct quotation from their own work when they relied heavily on AI. This happens when we become passive consumers instead of active collaborators. The solution isn't to abandon AI, it's to engage with it more intentionally. When you approach AI as a thinking partner, rather than a replacement for thinking, neural pathways strengthen through active questioning and verification. Memory consolidation improves when you actively process and synthesize AI insights. Creative connections multiply as you combine AI-generated ideas with your unique perspective. Critical thinking deepens through constant evaluation of AI outputs. The MIT study doesn't prove AI makes you stupid. It proves that how you use AI determines whether it enhances or diminishes your intelligence. The real choice isn't between being smart without AI or dumb with it. The choice is between passive consumption that atrophies your thinking, active collaboration that amplifies your intelligence. We are the generation that gets to decide how AI shapes human consciousness. Every prompt is a vote for the kind of AI future we want. Every interaction is training data for the systems that will serve our children. Don't let AI do your thinking for you. Let it help you think better than you ever have before. The future belongs to those who learn to dance with artificial intelligence, not those who fear it or surrender to it. Choose partnership over paralysis. Choose active engagement over passive consumption. Your brain isn't getting weaker, it's getting ready for the greatest cognitive revolution in human history. What's your experience with AI tools? Are you using them to enhance your thinking or replace it? Share your strategies for maintaining sharp, critical thinking in an AI-powered world. Want to be the winner of the AI age and a first mover? Transform your skills with real AI knowledge today in our AIR and D-Labs. We go way beyond what I can cover in a 10-minute video. Specific frameworks, detailed training programs, and step-by-step -step systems for building a career in the AI economy. The AI revolution is creating the biggest job market transformation in history. The question isn't whether this will happen, it's already happening. Will you be positioned to benefit from it? Inside the labs, we're not just teaching theories, we're sharing the exact systems my team is implementing right now that are delivering massive results for real businesses, including our own marketing at First Movers. For a fraction of the price of what this level of 
life coaching and live training should go for. I'm giving it all to you. Join us inside and learn more about the labs, 